Hello, everybody. Welcome to Forstam Lightning Talks in Building H. Uh, I want to introduce you Hannes Mühleisen, who will talk about DuckDB, an embedded analytic database, and give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, so, a quick introduction. Um, so, I work at CWI, which is the Dutch National Research Lab for Computer Science and Mathematics. Um, I also teach um, computer science students about the wonderful world of databases. Um, but I have found out that uh, a good way of learning about databases is building them, uh, and therefore I also do that. And today I'd like to talk to you about one of these products, uh, and that is DuckDB. Obviously, DuckDB is not my own sort of sole creation, but uh, there's other people involved, uh, most notably uh, Mark Rasfeld, who is not here today. Um, so we're going to talk about DuckDB. Uh, DuckDB is a database management system, uh, and it's new. It's completely new. And it's focused specifically to be um, embeddable, which means not embeddable as in hardware, but embeddable as in embeddable into other software. Um, and it's analytical, which means that it's uh, focused on crunching through large amounts of data as opposed to, you know, dealing with uh, transactions like, uh, you know, orders in your online shop. So if you want to do orders in your online shop, go to up to the Postgres people next door. If you want to crunch large amount of data, you can use DuckDB. Um, now I have to find out whether my uh, clicker works. It does. Um, it is common to start these kind of talks with a description of how terrible the state of this world is. Um, this is no exception. The present is very bad. Um, the data management in data analytics is a, is a huge mess. Uh, I don't know if anybody of you has ever tried to use things like uh, Pandas. Uh, and that's great. It works with the five examples that they have on the website. But um, one of the problems there that is really um, overwhelming is the, um, in the data storage itself. You know, people tend to have uh, these text file zoos where, you know, there's a well-known folder structure somewhere which has a bunch of CSV files in it, and then there's maybe some code on top of that that decides which CSV file to sh should be read. Um, once we have load loaded these files, um, we have these crude query processing engines, for example, the one that is in, in, in Pandas or um, the one that is in uh, the R environment. Um, once people decide that CSV files are too slow, they start inventing their own crude hand-rolled binary formats that uh, are on disk, uh, maybe, and, and start processing those. There's been a recent push in the direction. Um, in generally, this is sort of a zoo of one-off solutions, um, and that makes like secondary problems, like for example, changing anything about the data that you have very difficult. So this is bad. Um, we don't want this. Um, and these things are all solved problems. You know, we have data management systems. They've been around uh, for 50 years or so. Um, and what we are trying to do with DuckDB is make them usable also for these data analysis tasks uh, that are so common. So, here the f so now this is the contra. Yeah? The future is bright, obviously, um, with SQLite. Uh, sorry, with DuckDB. So, uh, um, who has used SQLite? Okay, this is very many people. Um, in fact, everybody has used SQLite because it is in every browser, every phone, um, and every device that you can imagine. Um, what we're trying to do is build something similar to SQLite, but very different in sort of the um, intended features um, uh, in the sense of what kind of data analysis questions you want to ask. So you want to do anal uh, data analytics in uh, contrast to with SQLite where you do um, transactional data management. And how do we do this? Um, we have built a very fast uh, so-called vectorized uh, data uh, processing engine. I will explain to you in a bit uh, what that is. And we have stolen a lot of good ideas from SQLite. For example, um, DuckDB does not require you to uh, run a separate server. Um, you know, this idea that you have to run a, a, a daemon that, that is your database that you have to kind of set up and configure and restart and whatever. No, it's kind of database as a library. Um, you run uh, the, uh, the DuckDB system inside your process. Uh, this has a nice side effect that data transfer from whatever you are using to talk to DuckDB, and DuckDB becomes very fast. Uh, and this is for data analysis, this is really a critical question. Uh, we've written a paper, this was quite fun, uh, measuring, for example, the client protocol speed of various uh, popular databases. 
and uh, the guys next door from Postgres, they uh, came pretty badly. Um, what we also have stolen from SQLite is the idea that you have a single uh, file storage format. So basically, where all your database, no matter how complex it is, um, no matter how many tables it has, is in a single file. Um, and we've also stolen the idea of that it should be simple to install. More on that in a bit. So this is, uh, this is the bright future. Um, how do we make that work? Um, so DuckDB is uh, a library. So think of a, just a, a package, a library that you in, embed into your uh, application. Um, we have zero external dependencies. This is really something that, that uh, took a lot of work. Um, but it is something that we believe uh, is, is actually quite necessary for a library to be successful, is that you don't have to install 57 uh, other programs before you can use it. Uh, in fact, uh, we have a special way to build DuckDB that results in two files, one header and one implementation. Um, DuckDB has a, the, on the base layer is a C++ API. Uh, we have full SQL support, so I went through um, the, this wonderful job of implementing things like window functions in, uh, in a database system, which I can tell you are not fun, so you don't have to do it because you can use DuckDB. Um, we also have built a, a wrapper for the API that SQLite uses, so in principle what you can do if you have an application that talks to SQLite, you can do some uh, library preload tricks and it will use DuckDB instead. So this is uh, something that we have done to make it easy to, to switch. We've also um, learned from previous projects how important it is to integrate with the tools that people are using. Uh, in, the t in terms of data analysis, people use R and Python, so there are packages for R and Python, uh, I'll show an example in a bit, um, that basically include everything that you need to run uh, DuckDB as well. Um, and so just to wrap it up, there is a command line interface, uh, and for the people that want to do say, web stuff, we have a REST server as well. Let's show some examples. So here is an example for, uh, for Python, uh, which, by the way, was also invented at CWI, so uh, we are kind of obliged to integrate with Python. Um, you say pip install DuckDB. That's very complicated. Um, and then you have it installed. There's no additional software required. Uh, all the batteries included. Um, and then you can just use this uh, wonderful Python database API where you... Um, yeah, you connect to a database. In this case, the database is a file, so this would be a file. Um, and then you can run SQL queries, which is uh, a required you know, skill that you have to have to work with DuckDB. Or maybe not, because in the R world, we have um, a similar integration where you, um, you, know, you load up the database, you connect to your database file, and the R people have invented this wonderful uh, deep layer uh, system of actually programmatically expressing queries, which is quite nice. Um, and finally, uh, the C++ API I wanted to show you for the people that are more in, in C land is really just that. This is the actual fully functioning minimum integration of DuckDB into C++, uh, where again, you know, you, you specify which file you want uh, your database to be stored in, and then you can merrily run uh, SQL queries. So that's the outside view, right? So it's not very exciting. Uh, I realize this. I mean, not many people get excited about databases. I'm one of the few. Um, but it is a tool that you can use to store your data, and you can actually, and this is the big difference, you can get it out again quickly, and you can run queries on large amounts of data on your local computer quite quickly. Now, how do we do this? Um, let me talk briefly about some internals. Um, so we have something called vectorized processing. I'm not going to talk a lot about the other things, but um, this is the core of the engine that makes it fast. Um, and you have to, under to understand vectorized processing. You have to understand that database engines come in different flavors. So that is traditionally tuple at a time. This is what Postgres, MySQL, SQLite, everybody uses. It's basically we look at one row of data at a time in the process of running queries. That's great. Um, however, it's slow. Then we have the pandas numpy r uh, way of doing things where we look at one column at a time, uh, which is faster but has issues when the data becomes bigger than memory. And then finally we have vectorized processing, which is kind of the, the middle ground where you look at chunks of data at a time. And this is a very nice thing because that means that the data that we look at in a query fits into the higher in the CPU cache hierarchy. Um, so here on the right you see a 
so short um, overview over the CPU caches and basically what we're trying to do with DuckDB is keep the data that has been worked on up here in these very fast L1 and L2 caches and actually avoid going into main memory um, for performance reasons. Um, and this is very nice because it allows us to process data that is bigger than um, main memory. Um, this is the, one of the limitations of things like pandas is that once your data becomes bigger than memory, you're screwed. Um, with a vectorized execution engine, you actually have a reasonable chance of still uh, completing your analysis questions. Um, yeah, and you don't get uh, wonderful out of memory errors. Um, so now I'm gonna actually uh, skip something. Um, so you would ask, then you would ask, okay, so why should I do vectorization? It's great that Hannes is excited about it, but what's, what, does, what kind of difference does it make? And, does it make? and this is a, uh, like a very, very crude benchmark. We run like a standard benchmark, TPCH, uh, on different systems, and this is based on an old version. We have gotten faster in the meantime, but basically if you look on the, on the bottom there, you can see the, the time it takes to complete these benchmark queries between the different systems, and then there's DuckDB up here, which clearly is much faster. So generally you would say that uh, this is 40 times faster than a traditional engine that is working in a top level time fashion. But then you'd say, but yeah, Hannes, you're an academic and you have a nice pet project, but you know, I, I'm interested in something that I can use, um, maybe even in serious ideas. Um, and this is why I briefly wanna talk about our quality assurance um, that we are um, sort of doing with DuckDB. So basically we have continuous integration running where we have millions of SQL queries run on every single release. Uh, we know the correct result for every one of these queries. So whenever we get something wrong, it instantly flagged. Um, we have verified benchmark results for large standard benchmarks that we also check for. And basically we went around and steal everyone's test cases. So with SQL engines you can do this because they all have the same sort of query language. Uh, so the only thing you have to do is to have to write a parser for whatever they have. Uh, result format they have. Uh, my favorite part was to write a scraper for the um, SQL Server website because they have example queries with answers and from that we generate a bunch of test cases as well. We also do query fuzzing where we auto-generate queries uh, to try to break um, our system, uh, which always works if you run the fuzzer long enough but you find very important bugs in the meantime. Um, and we also have something that we call continuous benchmarking where every release is subjected to benchmarking and we can flag performance regressions uh, quickly. Um, so DuckDB is free and open source uh, under the MIT license. Um, we are currently in pre-release, so which means that you can't yell at us if we change APIs internally, but um, it is fully functional. You can use this to run uh, queries to store data. It's, uh, it is all there. Uh, we have a website, uh, there's a GitHub page where you know you can go file a pull request if you want. Um, we are very interested in hearing feedback and if DuckDB doesn't do you know something that you wanted to do um, then please tell us. If you're even more database inclined then you can send us a, p a pull request with new features, bug fixes, whatever. We have a, a long list of issues in the issue tracker that have tagged with help wanted or good first issue so these are good places to start um, and with that I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Can I ask two questions? You have to ask him. Yeah. Uh, do you do something for internal data compression? Uh, as you say, you store, it's used for big amount of data. Yeah, okay, so the question is, do we do something for internal compression? Um, what we, what we uh, are working on is that the, um, two things. One is the, um, the storage on disk is gonna be compressed, so whatever we write to disk to the single file format is gonna be compressed. But we also, and we, this is really something we're working on right now, is working with compressed intermediates so that vectors, for example, if, the, if you have a vector of a thousand values and they're all the same, then we have compression that will actually not move these thousand values around, but um, you know, the, the fact that it's the same. And the second question is, uh, do you support any statistical functions like uh, computing percentiles and yeah. uh, getting histograms back from the database yeah. engine? That's a good question. Um, so our philosophy there is that because the data transfer between DuckDB and the host is so fast that if you want things that we don't support, it's actually you're not gonna die pulling a chunk of data into 
pandas, for example, and running it there. Um, there is support for user-defined functions if you want to add anything. Uh, we have a fairly complete uh, aggregation functions library, so there is multiple options there, but, um, but the general idea is that we don't, um, you, we don't punish you for pulling a large chunk out of the system. We don't hold the data hostage. Hi, I have a question. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, do we have a connector for the SQL Alchemy? For example, in, in Pandas, uh, yeah. you have a connector for SQLite, so you can write a SQL query and then... Yeah, um, that has been... I'm not sure what the status on that is, but people have worked on this. Um, I think eventually, uh, if it's not working already, it should be working pretty straightforward because we support the exact same query language as Postgres. So I, I su suspect it should uh, already work, um, and it's just a question of plumbing um, the connection. Okay, thank you very I'm much. I'm outside. After, if you want to talk to me, I'm outside. Yeah? Okay, perfect. Thank you for your talk.